Now, there is for the uh, U.S. Senate uh, a primary also. Mike Gibbons is uh, one of those uh, up for grabs, so to speak, in, uh, in that race. And Mike Gibbons, made for Ohio, is on line one <laughs> right now. You need that guy to do your spots, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he has a good voice. <laughs> uh, seriously, uh, at this time of year, a radio station, a TV station, runs a lot of ads. And most of them are filled with uh, half-truths, mistruths, and uh, sometimes outright lies. And it's kind of like reading an ad for an apartment or a house where it tells you it has a view or that it's a fixer upper and then you find out what the real <laughs> you know what the real problems are so i have a feeling that in your case and i think i've even heard this one uh that mike gibbons is a millionaire businessman and doesn't care about the little people so how much of that is true mike <laughs> uh well i've been very blessed uh, fred but i can also also tell you i often say this in a speech uh I thought I was going to be a concrete finisher, and I'll be the only U.S. senator that uh, actually knows how to balance a budget and <laughs> knows how jobs are created, but I can finish your driveway. There you <laughs> go. Well, see, and I've always thought, and, and, and it really depends sometimes, but I always thought that we need the people who do understand business uh, in, in positions of power because, as you said, they know how to balance a budget. They know what it is to hire people. Uh, the right people for the job, fire people when they aren't doing their job correctly. Uh, they know what it takes to lose a number of times. And I'm guessing that as you built your business, you probably had some failures that you had to overcome, right? Well, uh, it's it's not easy, uh, particularly the business I chose. I didn't know it existed before I started. I, I, my dad was a, a wrestling coach and a high school teacher. Mm-hmm. And uh, I grew up in Parma, Ohio, and, uh, you know, the only thing my dad ever asked me is what happened with practice. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. But, uh, but, you know, he was a great guy. He, he, you know, he taught me about personal responsibility. He was a hardworking guy. He had always had two jobs and uh, two full-time jobs. And, you know, I, he, he taught me about the work ethic. And yeah. so I started working at an early age and, I've uh, I live the American dream. I'm very fortunate, and uh, and I, I'd like my kids to have the same opportunities, and and your kids, and and uh, my grandkids, and everybody else. It's, so is you know, that we have is, a left wing that it, doesn't believe in that anymore? So is that the reason that you got into it? Because look, I mean, you're you're old enough that you, you know you got a good business going. You could probably just take it easy. Why do you even want to go to Washington D.C., which most people consider the swamp? And get involved in all that kind of stuff. Because I'm very concerned. I think our nation's in peril. I I, uh, I got tired of throwing stuff at my television set. <laughs> and you know that what what instigated the whole thing is I've got five kids, and and uh, my second youngest uh, kid is a, uh, a got his aerospace engineering degree at Georgia Tech, mm-hmm. and in fact. Uh, and and uh, then went off and joined the U.S. Navy, and wow. he's now a Navy pilot. And uh, in fact, his call sign is NASA. <laughs> ah, good but, for him. Uh, yeah, he's a great kid. But uh, my wife and I went and visited him down in Pensacola. And uh, you know, frankly, I I had never I never had military in my family background. I never had any uncle or grandfather mm-hmm. or anybody saying, "Hey, Mike." You had to go uh, join the military, and so he did this on his own. He's a patriotic guy, and I'm very proud of him. I couldn't be more proud. And, and we went to visit him, and and I was a bit embarrassed. It was like I'm a guy that started out with nothing, and uh, and 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 achieved the American dream. I know it's there if you want to work hard enough. And, uh, and I said I got to do something, and and. Um, this is what it led to, long story short. And well, you sound very concerned about about what is going on with the left yes. and the liberal agenda and the liberal radical left wing crazies and all that stuff that people you know, and I'm not one to to go far out into the field on on either party. I'm really more interested in, in what you might do if you're elected. And there's a phrase that one of our listeners just hates to hear. 
And so I got to ask you about it. And it's reaching across the aisle. If you are elected, how much reaching across the aisle are you willing to do? Or do you think you even can, knowing what the left, in your mind, wants to accomplish? Well, I mean, it, it, it really depends on the radicalism of the agenda of the people across the aisle. I, you know, I think most, uh, I think the bulk of Democrats, I'm hoping, I, mean, I guess maybe it's a wishful, wishful thinking, mm-hmm. uh, they still believe in American values. They understand, you know, free market capitalism, and that's the reason we're the greatest country in the history of the world, along with the values our founders started with, um, and that combination has created, uh, you know, people, people don't realize that live in this country. We're no matter what you are, I don't care if you're African American, Irish, German, Italian, in each case, you're the luckiest one of those people, mm-hmm. uh, in, in the world for living here. And, uh, and I've traveled all over the world and my, my job is, uh, in, you know, as I said, I'm an investment banker, but most people don't know what we do. And in my job, I had to convince CEOs all over the world that my ideas were the right ideas. They had to trust me to execute the most important transactions those companies would ever do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it requires persuasion. I've spent my entire adult life learning how to be uh, persuasive and, and, and uh, in, in convincing people that, that I was the right guy, and, and I'm, I'm hopeful that those kinds of skills that I developed in business uh, will translate to dealing with people in the in the U.S. Senate. All right. One of the other I, things I know. One thing: it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot more. It, it's a lot better skill than just knowing how to win an election. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the other things I got to ask you, and then we're going to take a break, but I'm going to put you on hold. Is uh, one of the questions that comes up a lot, um, and, and I know you'd be in the Senate, not in the House of Representatives. Right. Would you work to get rid of Mitch McConnell? Because a lot of people feel that Mitch, uh, while he was a Trump supporter in the beginning, hasn't been strong enough in that regard recently, and in many cases, it just goes along to get along, and they're not happy with that and, and with any show of strength. Is that something that you would work for if you got elected? To get him reelected? To get him uh, out. To get, get him out. Well, uh, well, I, I can tell you this. Mitch McConnell is the guy that recruited J.D. Vance. Uh, so I don't think I'm on his uh, on his list of favorites. You're not you're not going to get uh, invited to any of his parties? Probably not. And, you know, and I'm, I'm not really uh, big on uh, Washington parties. It's not a, a social scene I want to become a part of. We, we've got a lot of work to do. And uh, I spent my life working long hours, and, and I'm going to do the same thing. If I get this opportunity, um, uh, you know, when we we'll f- feel pretty positive about our chances right now. Mm-hmm. If I get this opportunity, I'm going to work hard to, uh, to to restore the American values that uh, that I think are are absolutely essential to, for every American to, to to grasp and understand and 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 buy into 100. percent And, okay. and uh, you know, it, I, I I study economics. Fred, I, I undergrad, graduate school, um, taught it, and and we need some people in the U.S. Senate to understand economics. We're going to have a bond of inflation here, unlike any we've ever seen. Yeah, and uh, and and it really rests right at the feet of the Biden administration. He started out with uh, kind of rejecting energy independence because of uh, his the left wing pushing for the new green deal kind of things, and it was stupid. It it, it endangered our security and and even that now it's endangered our pocketbooks so it's we, we've got to get the spending cut back i want to i believe in small government i don't believe the government should be involved in a lot of things like education and health care and, and things that they've really screwed up all right Whatever i'll tell you touch, what hold that uh, thought it costs more hold that thought i'm going <laughs> to yeah. throw you on hold for just a minute uh, we're going to take a quick break sure. here for weather and traffic the bee is not silent in Gibbons. In fact, there's two of them in there, and you'll need to learn how to spell that if you want to go to the website, gibbonsforohio.com, gibbonsforohio.com, G-I-B-B-O-N-S. And Mike is on the other end of the line. He's running for the U.S. Senate for the uh, seat uh, currently held by uh, Rob Portman, who is leaving. Um, you have a number of people against you in the primary 
uh, J.D. Vance uh, among them, and a few others. What what do you think uh, sets you apart from everybody else? Because when I hear the ads, and trust me, I hear a lot of them, uh, there's a there's a theme to all of them that seems to run through them all. So why you, Mike? Well, I think I have a heck of a lot more experience in real world uh, situations than they do. Uh, you know, I'm running against a guy with 92% name recognition uh, who has uh, honorably served in the in the Marine Corps and then has not done anything other than either run for office or sit in office, even in times when he wasn't in office and there was no election. Um, he really never entered the private sector. That one day of private sector service in his life, I think that you know you ought to have some familiarity with the economy and, and what it takes to make the economy work if you're going to go to the United States Senate. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm I'm running against a guy uh, who spent the last ten, fifteen years in uh, in various uh, elective uh, capacities and and. Uh, uh, you know, owns the Cleveland Indians and, and changed the name to the Guardians. And, and I don't know. If... <laughs> now that is a point. Know, that people... is a point against for a lot of people. <laughs> well, you know, I, I just think succumbing to uh, you know these crazy requirements of the left, uh, you know, doesn't indicate that he's going to be responsive to conservative values when he gets to the to the U.S. Senate if he got there. Um, you know, I, I, I'm running against a uh, a woman who served for four years as uh, the state uh, uh, Republican co-chair. Um, she talks about how she developed a fine oil machine in the Republican Party, yet we didn't win by any bigger margin we did before she got there. Yeah. And, and we lost three support, Supreme Court justices uh, to the left. Uh, it, while she was in there, all she had to do was tell everybody who the Republicans were. It's, that's not a very good performance. Um, and and it, obviously, there's a bunch of money missing from the party, and she's uh, right in the middle of it. I, uh, you know, I, I've spent my life, you know, s- serving my clients successfully, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm I'm proud of what my partners and and, and I have accomplished in, in my business career. I've I've done it uh, with, you know, perfectly ethically the whole time, and uh, and as I said, we solve problems that uh, that companies all over the world faced, and and they chose us to do that, and we've grown it to be one of the better known firms in America in, in the market investment banking. All right. Well, let me uh, let me do this. We'll do kind of a, a almost a lightning round because if you make it through the primary, if you're the victor uh, in the primary, we'll get you back on. Uh, before November. So give me uh, like a sentence or two on each of these things. All right. And we'll go right through. If you go sure. up online, you can get the, you get the longer version at Gibbons for Ohio.com pro life. Um, my, you know, my mother was adopted. I was, I was pro life before they called it pro life. I found out she was adopted when I was 12 years old. And, uh, it was uh, it was kind of a shock to me because she never wanted to tell me. Uh, I've been involved with, uh, uh, you know, I was never an activist, but uh, I was very vocal about it. Uh, I was president of the Fathers Club at my daughter's high school. I'd drive them to events. Uh, I, I was, as I said, always outwardly supportive. And, and, and have okay, I'm going to stop. Made it a I'm going to stop okay, you there. Good. That yes. was that was way more than two sentences. Second Amendment. Okay. <laughs> Second Amendment. <Yes. laughs> I think uh, I think the new constitutional carry law in, in Ohio was j- really just an affirmation of the rights we got to, uh, under under our constitution. I, I will never uh, I will never allow our rights under the Second Amendment to be weakened in any way. Excellent. Immigration and border security. A country without borders is no nation at all. I don't believe anybody that comes to this country illegally should ever have a path to being a citizen in this country. Um, they need to, to get in line and do it the right way. And finally, critical race theory. Absolutely unacceptable. Um, a philosophy with Marxist roots that wants to destroy this country. Uh, you know, they, uh, uh, it, it is it is the most dangerous philosophy that is 
come on the American scene, maybe in its history. All right. Excellent. I appreciate the time today. It's Gibbons for Ohio.com. If you make it through the primary, we'll get you back on before the general election. All right. And this uh, conversation yes, thanks, Fred. will be available as a podcast at iHeartRadio uh, and also as a blog post on my uh, Facebook page, uh, probably some by sometime this evening. And I'll share the link with you later. All right. You bet. Thanks. Right. Great. Thanks for having me, Fred. Thank you Good very time. much.